Everyone wants to live an inspired life, yet so many people search for happiness following the footsteps of peers and taking advice from people who have different values and outcomes to which they're searching. There are people born into wealth, graduated from the best universities in the world, and there are people who have none of that and yet are living extraordinary lives full of fulfillment and reward. The purpose of this podcast is to share insights and strategies that allow you to question the status quo and think freely so you can design your life and be who you want to be. We get one life. Time is our most valuable asset. I believe that when we're free and able to focus on meaningful work, we become better human beings. This is Always Free, and I'm your host, Jason Greystone. Welcome to the leading podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jason on social media and subscribe to the Jason Greystone YouTube channel for weekly videos. Don't forget to also subscribe to the weekly newsletter to receive frequent educational content and action steps to help you design your life so you can be who you want to be. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com. Well, 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 welcome back to the podcast, guys. I hope you've all had a great week so far. Hope you haven't caught the coronavirus, um, which turns out to be one of the weakest viruses on earth. We've had uh, lots and lots of panic set in, and I'm going to talk about that in this uh, episode. But before I do that, I just want you to know that this is the number one podcast for financial empowerment and wealth creation. And if you're listening to this for the first time, you're in for a treat, but I also recommend that you go back to episode one and start listening there because you're really going to get hooked on that as I take you through the journey of what I did in order to become completely financially independent um, in my own life. So go back and listen to those. And as I say, this week we're going to be discussing current affairs, which is the coronavirus, but really how it affects the markets because. There seems to be a lot of panic setting in and people are very, very fear driven. One of my friends in Dubai runs a series of uh, martial arts workshops. He runs a martial arts company and he relies on running that through fitness centers and schools and gymnasiums and they've basically shut everything down. And he says, you would not believe how people are behaving here. It's like pandemonium, how people are just going really overboard and overreacting. You've seen the toilet paper get wiped out. There's, uh, uh, you know, the toilet papers, people are fighting over toilet paper in the shops because of a, a lack of supply. And they're actually causing the lack of supply now. There wasn't a problem. Now there is a problem. And people are just kind of behaving erratically. And first of all, I just want to say, you know, there's about, you know, there is about 320,000 different viruses known to mammals and that affect mammals alone on Earth. And, you know, there's tons and tons of these viruses, measles, mumps, rubella, smallpox, the common flu, the common cold. And just the common cold alone, okay, last year, 2018 to 2019, there was something like 61 million people affected or fell ill to the common cold. And from from that, from that, from those, from the people that fell ill, those sixty one million, there was something like six hundred and thirty thousand people who were hospitalised, and there was about sixty odd thousand people, sixty one thousand people that were that died from the common flu. Okay, common flu, common cold, and on average, the common flu. Uh, kills 58,000 people per year, right? So uh, what I'm getting at here is no one thinks about that, no one worries about that, and the news has an agenda to promote negative propaganda, as I always say, right? And now the smallpox is in the news because just a few months ago it was World War Three. now that's forgotten, now everyone's on to... On to coronavirus and this will be forgotten by the summer but right now it's the coronavirus and the coronavirus is scaring people even though it turns out to be a very very weak virus you know it's something like 80 I think it's 87 uh, I think there's 87 deaths or something and something like you know 70,000 cases which is tiny, very, very weak. It's only affecting old people, low immune systems. It's not really affecting anyone who's healthy, vibrant, fit. And it's just gone crazy. People, We've seen the world go crazy. 
And in the markets, we've made a lot of money. <laughs> or we're going to make a lot of money because it, whether you're a long-term investor, now's the time where you're buying in. The markets have dropped. The S&P 500 dropped the big, the most it's dropped in a long, long time. And now you're getting those investments at a very, very cheap price. There's investors out there that are just saving their money for this. Okay, they're being cashed up. Save cash for the crash. You've got Warren Buffett sitting on the likes of 127 billion, ready to take advantage of these types of uh, of these moves in the market that are fear driven, and that's because you get bargains. Okay, so when I've spoken before about buying the market, I'm talking about this time right now. Your you, the price is dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. Yes, last week's investments or last month's investments have dropped in price. Yes. But now you're getting in at a much cheaper price and you can go and buy it as many as you possibly can because you're getting a bargain, right? And then as the market goes up, because in the next year, the market will go up. In the next five years, the market will go up. In the next 10 years, the market will go up. Over the next six months, six months to a year, it's going to go up, down or sideways. And it's as simple as that. But it will go up over time because that's what markets do. That's what innovation does that's what human beings do they evolve they innovate they grow and if we ever see a continuous decline in the in the stock market we know that we've got bigger fish to fry than where we put our money because that's basically humans going backwards devolving humans which which will not happen so there's money to be made there and then in the short term speculation well i've seen all the hype in the market this week i've made a lot of money on shorting the euro which netted me a nice little sum in just the space of 2 days because i saw all of the hype you know, I saw the, the euro dollar spike up. It bounced off of that 1.08 level as predicted. We shot up. We uh, saw a lot of bullish momentum there until we started to see that decelerate. We saw exhaustion in the market. I shorted the market, got in and out within two days and earned a nice little bit of money there. So, you know, when you can actually approach the markets that way, you can make money. And when you can remove yourself from the oscillations of all this craziness, this fear, this animalistic kind of swings of positive, negative, positive, negative, and this kind of being in this survival mindset, you can make money, you can see clearly, which is exactly why I promote what I promote, okay, being free and able to focus on meaningful work, so you can become better human beings. And that is why I promote wealth building, why I promote financial stability so that you can see more than two feet in front of your face and you don't miss opportunities like this. So I kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit and how it kind of got me thinking about why people fail at this so much. And the main reason is that people dabble, okay? So we just want to get that out there. If you're dabbling, you're not going to make money in the markets. It's actually a skill that's got to be developed and respected. But with the majority of people who try and beat the market, they end up losing money over time. And it's not because of technicals, it's just down to psychology. It's down to their approach. And of course, once it's mastered, investing, speculation, it can be an extremely rapid acceleration vehicle for building wealth. And it can dramatically shorten your run to financial freedom. But there's an order and a set of processes and a mindset that you need to adopt in order to succeed at that. And just at the basic principles of it, you should be saving some money first just to just to kind of relieve that animal brain. Then you can look at investing passively and you can look at maybe picking some stocks, some large cap stops stocks and then you can start looking at speculation later okay because doing it that way is going to make sure that you've got the right psychology as you build wealth and those people that have had the highest success rate in the world whether that's investments or speculation or both most people most people who are very very successful have both they understand that there's this hierarchy of needs built into the human brain that require that order of stability okay I said before, there's an, the oldest part of our brains called the amygdala, and from an evolutional standpoint, it's there to keep us avoiding pain and seeking pleasure. It's literally hardwired into us so that we will always avoid pain first, then seek pleasure. 
All right. If you imagine back in the caveman days, uh, if you was to if you was living in a cave and there was a nice apple tree out there, and but at equal distance there was a lion. Okay, you will run to the cave to avoid the pain of the lion before you choose to run to the tree to get the apple. So you'll always avoid pain before you seek pleasure, which means that we are fearful more than we're greedy, if that makes sense. And this plays a big part in human evolution and a big part in market psychology. And it's still playing a part this week in the coronavirus. So instead of ranting and ranting and ranting, I wanted to give you kind of my... Uh, a few insights into why I think most people fail, and then I want to give you some tips on how you can improve and how you can start to work on becoming successful at investing in the markets. So the first one, I'm going to give you six reasons. The first one is people try to time the market, all right, focusing on trying to time the market um, and get the right time, buy in at the right time. And that instantly removes consistency from your tra- from your investment system all right sophisticated investors they understand that removing emotion as much as possible is absolute key to successfully growing their investment account and the way they do that is by removing decisions and instead they regularly buy the entire market and they buy the market like groceries not perfume as Benjamin Graham said right and by doing that they benefit from cost averaging and they benefit from the mean growth of the market and they're not trying to pick they're not trying to pick the right time or the wrong time they're just buying regularly and they know that over time they will appreciate that mean growth the next reason is uh, diversification okay people don't diversify so the best passive investors they don't concern themselves with a particular company or even a particular sector instead they just spread the risk over multiple markets and multiple sectors so an index fund for instance they'll pick an index fund and they will just buy the entire market and they and by doing so they are mitigating all of that you know, company risk, sector risk, and they're not concerned if a technology uh, sector's taking a dip or a particular makeup industry or a pharmaceutical industry or, you know, all that kind of stuff. They don't worry about that. Obviously, the returns are a little bit lower, but it's lower risk, it's lower effort, and it's you're going to still beat the market. Uh, you're going to beat 99% of investors who try and beat the market out there if you just do that. The next reason people struggle is because of shiny object syndrome. Now, this is just a a phenomenon where investors constantly chase what they perceive to be the next best system. Okay, what they're doing, again, they're avoiding pleasure, they're seeking pain, and instead of accepting that it's their own system that requires some refinement, they pursue a fantasy of this perfect no expense system. And of course, there's expenses with all businesses, and there's going to be some fine tuning, there's going to be some effort involved. Don't chase some, don't go and try and water someone else's grass, water your own grass. The next reason is a lack of trust. Now, there's no re- it's totally understandable. There's a lack of trust, particularly in the financial world. It's renowned for it. There's a lot of snake oil salesmen. There's a lot of brokers doing bad deeds out there, taking your money. Fund managers that aren't doing any, uh, doing you any favors when you invest your money with them. And it's just a, it's it's no it's no wonder there's a lack of trust. But what I'm specifically talking about here is people that say, well, if it was that easy, everyone would do it, right? And my answer is, no, really, it really is that simple. There's a video, actually, I think Jeff Bezos interviewed Warren Buffett, and he's basically asked him, he says, if, if, you're, if the way that you invest is so easy, why don't people do it? And it all comes down to, one, this f- avoiding uh fear okay avoiding uh, pain and seeking pleasure but two just not enough understanding okay so if you go and do the research you go into you're listening to this podcast so you guys know but if you're reading my newsletters if you're uh, doing some research mentoring under uh, people who have done it then you're gonna you're gonna have far more confidence You're, you're more likely to trust the process all right so lack of trust just comes from 
one, the little bit of fear in your head, but the fear comes from really not knowing enough about it. So you can mitigate that lack of trust just by going to do your research. The next thing is personality. So some people like being right more than they're wrong. Other people are okay being wrong uh, more than they're right as long as the reward to risk profile is stacked in their favor. Some people like to have many, many opportunities just to feel active because obviously a investment return income is completely different to a normal job income. There's no time for money correlation. So sometimes people feel like they need to do a little bit more even if it means that they lose a little bit of money on their returns, but it just they like they're more comfortable being active because we've been active for so long as humans. When you go from not having a job to living on investment returns, whether that's partially or fully, it does feel a little bit weird, and some people need that activity. So some people are okay with little activity. But what I'm getting at here is building and developing an investment system to suit your personality is absolutely crucial for success. And you must do that in order to have the best chance of succeeding uh, in investing. And finally, the last point I'm going to make is lifestyle. So trying to force investment and speculation systems into your lifestyle is a recipe for disaster because you know, it's it's much better to build it around your daily routine. The last thing you want to be doing is trying to manage investments or speculative trades whilst you're trying to go about your day-to-day business. If you're in a meeting with a client or you've got to go and do the school run and you can't maintain any consistency and you can't treat it like a business, then you're going to blow consistency out the water, which means your, cons- your profits are going to be blown out the water. So, When you can do it the other way around and build the system into your life rather than force it into your life, you it's far easier to maintain consistency and build uh, profits. So, just to kind of round this podcast off, I want to just give you some tips, quick tips. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but I've just given you six things, six reasons that people really struggle. Now, I want to give you 15 quick tips that will help you improve on investing and speculation if that's something that you're looking to add to your wealth building arsenal. So the first one is just literally set up regular automatic transfers to low cost index funds. All right. Now, yes, I'm not going to tell you how to do that on this podcast. I could speak about that for an entire two days. Uh, in fact, I talk, I've got an entire module on that in the Tears of Freedom program. But go and look it up. You're going you're gonna to have much more <laughs> success rate if you go and learn. So one, set up regular automatic transfers to low cost index funds. Two, look up the term cost averaging. Dollar cost averaging, pound cost averaging. Look up that term and read about it. Understand what it is. Number three, study the great such as Benjamin Graham, Warren Buffett, go and read some of their books, their philosophies, their investment strategies that have stood the test of time, go and read up on those and get an understanding of what they did because it's very, very simplistic. Number four, learn how to read a financial statement, okay? This is something that most people, even people that have run businesses for years, don't know how to run a financial statement. They don't know how to read the ins and outs of a financial statement. They leave it up to their uh, accountants and then wonder why their cash flow is low and they're bleeding, you know, they're deaf by a thousand cuts, I call it. You've got to understand how to read a financial statement. It doesn't take long to understand. Go and Google it, go and YouTube it. Um, and understand that. Number five, learn how to identify undervalued stocks. All right, that's all I'm going to say. Learn how to identify undervalued stocks. There is a very, very uh, simple set of um, rules that you can go and and um, <clears throat> there is a very, very simple set of uh key indicators that you can use once you can read a financial statement that you can then go and apply to the markets and then look at certain uh, price to book ratios, price to equity ratios, and you can understand how when stocks are undervalued. Go and look it up. Go and read the book by um, Benjamin Graham called The Intelligent Investor. This it will explained in there. The next thing is buy large cap stocks that you would be happy to hold for 10 years minimum. Okay, so if you're going to invest in uh, large cap, large market cap stocks, only look at ones that you'd be happy to hold for 10 years minimum. So what I mean by that is you're not looking at businesses and stocks and 
um, that you're going to look and check the charts every day, every week, every month. Literally, go and only buy businesses, only buy stocks that you will be happy to just place the trade, buy the stock, place the investment, and you would be happy to not check it for 10 years. Number seven is split your investment account into three. Okay, so in fact, you could even argue that you, you split it into four. You could have the buffer in your investment account, okay? But really, the three main things are passive investments, so low risk, low effort, low time, passive investments, lower returns, but you're still beating the majority of the, of the market you try and dabble. The second thing is buying stocks, large cap stocks. You might have a large cap, medium cap stock uh, investment section. And then speculation, trading. And that's the three sections. So if you see your investment account as three different sections, it will make you much more objective. It'll make It will give you an objective mind. Number eight is learn a trading strategy. So go, if you're interested in taking uh, to the next step and, and, and starting to speculate and activating that speculation side of your investment account, learn a trading strategy. Hundreds of strategies out there. They probably all work. As long as you're paying attention to your personality and your lifestyle, learn one go and test one, and that's it, right? (laughs) Go and consider trading it. Tier 1 trading, teach a handful of strategies and teach you how to build it to your personality. You can go to Tier 1. Number eight, uh, number nine, sorry, treat it as a business, okay? If you're investing, if you're speculating, it's a business, okay? You are trying to generate a consistent profit, a consistent income from the market via a skill and that is a business, okay? It's defined as a business, so treat it as a business. Don't see it as a hobby. Don't see it as a dabble. Don't see it as something that you do every now and then. Don't see it as something where you shoot from the hip. Don't be inconsistent. You have to go and treat it as a business if, you're, if you think that you, you, you want to generate consistent profits. Number 10, don't overcomplicate it. Don't try and be clever. You don't need to be. Number 11, Test a trading strategy, okay? Go and test something, ideally five years of historical data before you even trade live money. There's no need to spend a penny trading live, risking live money until you've gone and tested it and you've verified that it's profitable for the last five years in the markets. Number 12, start small and apply a solid money management system to your trading. So start very, very small, focus on being consistently profitable, then you can start to apply a money management system so that you can increase, decrease your position sizing once you're profitable. If you try and do that before and you're not profitable, you're going to be throwing fuel at a fire. It is not going to help you at all. It's going to blow you up even quicker. So start small, then apply money management. Number 13, focus on the process rather than the outcome. Trust the process, okay? Don't don't have, um, you know, sh- instant gratification. Think longer term. Trust the process. Go through the steps I've just said, and you will eventually the the outcome will be inevitable. Number fourteen. Leave it. Do not jeopardize it. Once you're trading live, once you're investing, don't jeopardize it. Don't let your emotions tweak it, change it. Don't let your gut feel damage it. Just leave it, okay? You went and tested it. You've done all that work. It's profitable. Now you've just got to trade it exactly how you tested it. And lastly, stay grounded, okay? Neutralize fear and greed. And the way you do that best is by journaling. Journal your trades. Journal your investments. Write down your feelings at the time, why you made the trade, why you made the investment, and review it regularly. And if you make a mistake and write that down, read it back, you're likely to not make that mistake again, but go and review and continuously optimize. If you're a trader, the moment you develop an edge, your edge is deteriorating. You have to continuously work at improving that edge and keeping that edge. It doesn't just stay there forever. All right. The markets are adapting. You have to adapt with them. So those are the 15 points. Those are the six reasons that most people struggle. Hopefully you got value from this. If you did get value from this, please, please give it a like. 
Go and leave a comment and a review on iTunes. Love to get this thing back into the top 10. It was number one for a while. It was in the top 10 for, for quite a while. I'd love to keep it as high as possible. And also, if you feel someone else will get value from this, and this is important work, right? This is really important work. Please share this with your social group. If you just share this with three people uh, this week, and then they share it with three people next week, and they share it with three people next week, we can reach literally 8 billion people in two and a half generations with this message. And that is my goal. So... Please share away. Until next week, don't worry about the coronavirus. Go and get your toilet paper. And until then, have a great day and the rest of your weekend. And I'll see you then. Subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. For news on all future events and updates, go to jasongreystone.com.